tomorrow. And if you're looking for a dish that's romantic and doesn't take a lot of time, look no further. Look no further, because Chef Bill Collins is here, and he's going to show us how to make scallop patata. Hey, Chef Bill. Hello. It's great to be here. Welcome it's back. It's good to have you Thank here. Thank you very much. Now so, we're making scallop or, sc or scallop? Well, it depends scallop. where you're from. Scallop, scallop. or scallop. If you're, from <laughs> the boss, if you're from the boss area, it's scallop. <laughs> I can't say it's it. It's about that hard or that soft A. It's exactly it. But yep. you know, which way is it in Western Mass? You're saying there's a specific scallop. way. Scallop. Scallop. All right, we're making scallops. Scallops. Yum. Now, Valentine's Day is on a weeknight this year. It is. So you either have to plan ahead and do a lot of prep and a lot of cooking days leading up to it, or you can make a, a faster, easier meal. Yes. Which I think we might be doing today. Good. That's perfect. So, so and which funny you should mention scallops because that's what we've got here today. <laughs> because <laughs> sea, seafood cooks quickly. Chicken, you know, might be half hour more. Seafood, scallops will be cooking literally in a matter of minutes. And so that way you can get the meal underway. Uh, if you're doing rice, as I've done there, that can be 20 minutes. The scallops, I'm going to show you, cook so quickly. Uh, and you don't have to cook them like uh, chicken. Just literally three, four, maybe five minutes, you're done and on the table. It's yeah, fast. You have That's a bunch great. of great tips, too. When you put them on, we were talking about this earlier, actually. You want to dry the meat or the seafood off. You do, because what's going to happen is you're going to get the sizzling, you're going to start steaming, and you won't get a nice sear on it. It's not the end of the world, but it gives a, a, a nice little bit of a crunch in the outside, and it looks nice. Nice, and if you remember to do it, it's a great way to go, and I highly recommend doing it. All right, well, let's get started. So what we have here is a very hot pan. And again, the way to check the pan, rather than put the oil in, see, it's a little bit of uh, schmutz uh, steaming from uh, the side of there. Don't want to cause a whole hullabaloo with this. But you know what you want to do is just warm it up nicely. And so with this hot, just a little bit, that smoke is actually just coming from the burner. Okay. Is I like to check the burner like that. You hear a nice sizzle going, mm -hmm. as opposed to just putting the oil in and hoping that it's ready. So this is nice and ready. So I'm going to just put some canola oil in. Not olive oil, because that, because we're cooking on a high temperature here, that'll tend to burn more quickly. Oh. So okay. this way, I'm just going to drop these on. What Hit about the, butter? How is that? Is that a higher cooking temperature or lower cooking temperature than oil? Uh, or a but, oil? Uh, it, well, butter is going to be higher than um, olive oil. What's going to happen is your butter, if it's a little bit t too hot, will turn brown. Not a bad thing. That doesn't mean it's burning. Mm -hmm. It's turning brown. Does it change the taste though when it turns brown? Uh, uh, no. It, it'll, oh. it'll keep it nice, but if you keep it on, uh, it's something they call noisette. Uh, oh, French for hazelnut, as we all know. Of course. And uh, <laughs> of course but by doing that, that, you sometimes do want to get that browner butter. So, uh, but in this case, you'll be going to scallops or or not. You're you're, you're fine to go with, with with just that. So now we've got them on, mm -hmm. uh, and you can smell already because oh, yeah. the, the fragrance is coming up. And just a little salt and pepper on here. And you salt and pepper in the pan. You do salt and pepper in the pan. You can do a little bit beforehand. I like to get, just give a little bit in the pan. Works out just fine. Now you're cooking in a cast iron pan, but you could really use any kind of pan, would you say, or is this a good pan to cook with? I prefer cast iron more often than not because you get a great sear on it. Uh, not everybody has a cast iron. Believe it or not, cast iron are the cheapest pans in the world. They need just a little bit of maintenance, but they're going to last you forever. And they do give you a nicer sear, but if you use a regular, nice quality pan as opposed to something really, you know, thin and inexpensive, you also get a good sear. Okay. The secret is having the pan hot. Hot, hot, hot. If it's not, if it's just a little bit warm or coolish, they're not going to get the searing and also on your, it. And your fish has to be dry too. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Had okay. It dry. So now. Uh, I'm going to move all of these around, and you see how we've got that nice browning? And, oh, perfect. And that is really just a couple of minutes. Now, you're trying to flip them and not just uh, switch them, or can you just kind of stir it up? Uh, well, you can stir it up, but you do want them flipped over. Mm -hmm. See, usually I like to use tongs, but I've got my tongs about six feet over there, <laughs> so I'm using this. This is what we call improvising on live yeah. TV. When life gives you lemons, you make uh, a spatula. That's, that's out of what makes a great chef, though. You work with what you got, and you, yeah. you make it happen, and it's not going to change the flavor. Exactly. No, it, 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 it comes out. It comes out beautifully. So right. now I'm going to tell you a hint for at home. It doesn't matter because we're on an electric burner here, but if this were a gas burner, I would take because it's cast iron. I would take my towel because I'm about to pour some wine in. And I'm going to take this away from, whoops, I'm going to take this away from here and pour it on. Because since it's a shallow pan, we're going to get a sizzle. Okay. Oh, okay. And it's you nice hear that sizzle? Too, yep. And what can happen is you can, might have a little flare up from uh, the, alcohol. the alcohol. And, mm -hmm. and so a lot of people are not prepared for that. And so this way, just play it safe, pull it off the burner, and it'll go just fine. Okay. So now I'm going to put in some lemon zest. Right. How and do this, you know how much to put in there? Uh, this is going to sound much? awfully. I I'm a sucker for lemon zest because it's not the lemon juice, mm -hmm. which can be awfully bitter. 
I don't think you can put too much in. Okay. And so if you go with the whole lemon or most of the lemon, you're going to be just fine. All right. Then you can use that lemon later. Exactly. And I'm about to. Good. Because <laughs> you read the recipe. I did, I did my homework, Bill. So, so now what I'm going to do is to get some lemon juice. Sorry to reach across you. Uh, no problem. This is the best $10 toy in the history of the world. I have yet to get one of those. You know, I need to get one. It's counterintuitive because it looks like, oh, just put it in the shape of there and it drops in that way. Nope, because no. the juice is coming out the bottom. What's going to happen is, look how... Notice the roundish lemon in my hand, <laughs> but I'm going to take it like this. I'm going to put the lemon juice in. Oh wow, it's like a lemony wine sauce. Well, exactly, That's good. and, and mm. no matter how much you squeeze, you use other tools, you're not going to get as much uh, out of it as with that tool. The last thing I'm going to put on are capers. These are uh, dried uh, flower buds, uh, and but they're put in a brine. Mm -hmm. And so, if you just eat a caper, feel free to do so, but I wouldn't. It's a bitter, I'm gonna do biting. It. Do it, Seth. Yep. I just, uh, really? It, I'm it, going to be it, the guinea pig. It's bit, bitter and biting, and you go, well, oh, gee, that's not all that good, but it adds to the flavor, the whole flavor that you got going on there. It's not good alone. Not good alone. <laughs> not good on its own. It, it, it's sort of like you know, if you were to take a, a spoonful of flour, you wouldn't eat that, but you love bread. Oh, that's so exactly, it's just, yeah. It's yeah, a that's a good, that's perfect. Exactly. Yeah. It's a component of the recipe. Now, these scallops are done. It was that quick. There you go. So, so I'm going to reach under here for a spoon. Smells amazing. And we're going to plate it with some vegetables, and we're going to plate it with some rice and then peppers. Exactly. And I'm just going to flip this up here, just take, because I didn't have a spoon, so improvising with an ice cream scoop. <laughs> Love ice it. Cream. Wait, that's going to come in handy later on, right? Uh-oh. Ice cream scoop? Yes, I happen to have another one. Perfect. Okay. Well, so we'll be back in just a bit, Chef Bill. Yes, yeah, <laughs> because later we're going to turn chocolate into luscious hot fudge sauce for your ice cream. You don't want to miss that.